They've got a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta. I believe this is a 2.5 liter. Owner's got two issues here. He needs to pass emissions and he has two check engine lights, something related to knock sensors and something related to the map sensor. Uh, so that's the manifold absolute pressure sensor. I believe it's a P0106, I think, off the top of my head. These cars have a tendency for this diaphragm to go out right here. Oh, and this is from the research that I've gathered. So I'm just trying to relay that information to you guys. So I believe that once this diaphragm ruptures, it could cause a lean condition and also let excess oil get into the intake manifold. Maybe, I'm not 100% sure on that. But if we look inside of here, so as you can see, I took off the throttle body and we could see oil at the bottom of the manifold. It's not excessive, but there is oil there. So the owner already went ahead and replaced the map sensor. He deleted the check engine light and it came back almost immediately, maybe even within a few days, who knows. So he did this and he also replaced his diaphragm. I don't know if it was actually ruptured. I just know that when he did this, he did it at the same time because I guess it's a known issue. And you know, this fault leads to problems with the map sensor. So he got rid of the OEM sensor and got this aftermarket one, which is, uh, doesn't really see a name on it, but he told me he got it from Rock Auto and it was only like $14. So, I, you know, it's it's not that great of a sensor, but I put my vacuum pump on it. You can see I got my big vacuum pump right here. And with it connected to my scanner, with the sensor unplugged, it goes to like almost like 18 PSI. Okay, 17 and a half PSI, something like that. Once you plug it in, it goes to around 13 and a half, close to like 14 PSI with it just plugged in, key on, engine off, okay? Obviously. Once I start pulling vacuum on it, you can see I got this rubber hose connected to it. So once I start pulling vacuum on the map sensor, I could get it to go down to like three or four PSI or whatever it is. And it seems to be holding. I don't see the numbers jumping around. If I move the harness while it's at like four PSI with the vacuum on it, I don't see the number fluctuating. It seems rock solid, like the sensor is doing what it's supposed to do. At this point, I don't think it's a sensor. It's been replaced, even though it's not a good quality part, it seems to be working, so that's fine. Uh, when the engine was running, I checked this diaphragm right here, this little hole on the bottom, and I didn't uh, hear anything or feel any type of vacuum indicating uh, like a vacuum leak right there. So I'm just going to assume that's fine because the owner went ahead and did it. When the car was running, I checked the fuel trims, and if this was leaking, we would have high short-term fuel trims, which we don't. But one thing I did notice when I took off the throttle body to get to the map sensor down here is the throttle body is actually pretty dirty. See this inside of here? And if we look at the back side, see that? And then the air filter is, I mean, it's not the worst thing I've seen, but in my opinion, it's definitely due for a new air filter, okay? But I think this right here might be what's causing our map code, that the car is not idling correctly. And it's because of the carbon and the crap and the residue of oil that's inside the throttle body because these plates are actually supposed to be cracked open a hair and let air get past it and when all that junk accumulates in that gap it doesn't let the air flow that it's supposed to and it could cause problems it could cause almost like false codes which is not really a false code but almost so it leads people down the path of replacing parts like the map sensor when it's really something else, something like this, where the throttle body just isn't working as it should because it can't get the air that it needs and it leads to these secondary codes like these uh, map codes. So what I'm going to do is, let me go ahead and clean out this throttle body and then I'll put everything back together. I'll look at the map readings after the throttle body is clean and the engine's running because I took a screenshot of what the map sensor was reading at idle before I took anything apart. So we'll go ahead and compare it and the only thing that's gonna change uh, in the two comparisons is the throttle body being cleaned. All right, so I cleaned out the throttle body and as you can see, I put a light source behind it. You can see the light coming from the top and the bottom and that's how it should be so that air can get past the throttle body. And before it wasn't like that because of all the carbon and the, the, the oil and whatever crap that was built up inside of there, it wouldn't let air get through. So let me get rid of the light so we can actually see how clean it turned out. So there goes the front side. And let's flip this around. There goes the back side. Oh, and I even cleaned up the uh, mating surface right here where the gasket or the O-ring goes. 
using the 3M white bristle brush. It's safe for aluminum, doesn't remove the aluminum, but it took away all that crud and crap that was right here to make sure we get a nice sealing surface. So let me go ahead and put all this back together. All right, so I got the engine put back together. It's running and I went ahead and cleared the check engine light. I made a report of all the uh, stuff, so I, I have all the codes saved. Uh, as far as the map sensor, we're not seeing too big of a difference. This is a screenshot of before. You can see it's at 4.6 PSI. This is before I touched anything. And after cleaning the throttle body, it's reading 4.2 PSI. So it's, it's actually really close to what it was before. And just to show you guys, those are screenshots I was just showing you. But this is actual live data with the engine running. See the 4.2? So it's not a big difference, but I wouldn't expect it to be a huge, massive difference. Um, so yeah, it went from 4.6 at idle to 4.2. But one thing I am noticing is here at idle, just sitting here, before, if I hit the throttle, the car was real laggy. It wasn't very responsive. And it just, it, it, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. It just felt like when you start to touch the accelerator pedal, not much was happening. And then it kind of ramped up and just kind of got there. And now it's almost instant. As soon as I hit the pedal just a little bit, the RPM reacts just how I expect it to. That's the first thing I noticed when I was pouring this car in that if I hit the accelerator pedal, the car felt like it didn't want to move. I had to give it more and more to get it going. And now it's very responsive. So yeah, those are the two things that I'm noticing that's different, but that's gonna be just about it for tonight. It's getting late. I gotta go pick up my kids. Uh, so I don't have any more time to look at this card today. I'll just continue looking at it tomorrow All right guys, so it's the next day and uh, I've been messing around with this Volkswagen mainly just kind of driving it around and No check engine light the car's been running super smooth. There's no sticking throttle. There's no hesitation nothing It just drives normal our short-term fuel trims not too bad, you can see it right there at the bottom. Uh, the long term, it's a little bit higher than I would like to see, but let's see, where is it at? Right there, you can see like 10%, 10 percent, 10.9.2. So that's probably gonna keep creeping up because it was it was already up there when the car came in. I did check for like uh, vacuum leaks. I didn't see anything. I did a smoke test on it. Plus the short term fuel trim is telling me that this thing does not have a vacuum leak. You can see the numbers right there. So I'm not suspecting that. <sighs> it just it just bums me out that there's a cheap uh, ching chong bing bong part on there as far as the uh, map sensor. You know, the owner threw out the original one, which I'm sure was fine. I really do think it was just a dirty slash restricted throttle body that was causing this issue. I'm not going to just keep running it all day when the car needs to be driven properly to go through its uh, drive cycles. I'm going to go into drive cycle monitors. The only ones that have not cleared is the EVAP system and the oxygen sensor in the car needs to be driven for all of that. So in order for those other two to complete, the car has to go through its various cycles of driving it on the expressway or a certain amount of code starts and you know things of that nature which i'm not going to do you know i'm not going to sit here and just keep running the car wasting the customer's gasoline so i'm thinking of calling the owner and just telling him to come pick it up and just drive it around let me know what happens um if that check engine light comes back we'll look into it again um if it doesn't come back within i don't know two days of driving it you know he could stop by i could check to see if it's ready to take emissions or he could just take it directly in himself if he's close enough to a facility but the car seems to be running real smooth and then as far as that knock sensor not a single code has popped up since the car has been here since yesterday and the owner did tell me that's very intermittent because he said like that code will pop up like once every nine months or something like that so i'm not gonna sit here and chase my tail over a very nine month intermittent problem you get what i'm saying guys it's just not worth it you could just spend hours and not get anywhere with that so let's see if cleaning out the throttle body actually fixed this issue but i'm just really bummed out about not having a quality or original map sensor on it because it definitely throws another variable into the mix.